Hi, I'm Holly Greer with the Alachua County Environmental Protection Department, and this is the Water Wisdom Series. In today's episode, I'm starting here low to the ground because I want to talk about our landscapes in the wintertime. Uh, today, um, we're lucky it's kind of warm out um, this morning. It's not too cold, cool enough for a jacket, but not freezing. But we have over the last month had some really cold evenings where the temperatures have dipped down into freezing temperatures and our plants have responded. So I wanna talk a little bit about landscape care in the wintertime in Florida. You can see the grass is kind of brown here and for a long time, uh, people in Florida worried when their landscapes turned brown. Um, they thought their grass should look green all year round and that's just not the case. So this is a very natural thing for grasses to do in the wintertime in Florida. They turn this brown color because they go into what's called the dormant state. And that can be kind of like, uh, you can think about it like animals, we've got a nice hawk behind us here. We uh, can think about that like when animals go into hibernation. So when an, animal, and when an animal goes into hibernation, it doesn't need much food or much water. It's just kind of in a resting state until the springtime when it will resume its normal activities or go back to the things that it normally does. Well, plants can do the same thing. So in response to these cooler temperatures, the plants like grass especially will turn brown and it will store energy at the roots. So instead of putting its normal energy into growing, it's focusing all of its resources, all of the stuff that it needs at the roots and it doesn't need much more. So you don't need to water it. You don't need to add anything to the soil. You just really need to let your grass rest. So in the springtime, it'll bounce back and get back to its usual growth. Things that we do on our landscapes, the, the things that we may add to the land or the way that we water can all impact the how much water we have available to us and to our um, natural areas for the wildlife and the plants in those areas and for the water in those areas. Um, and also it can affect how healthy and how clean that water is. When I talk about landscapes in this video, I'm not just talking about yards, but also about the areas around our schools and businesses, around apartment complexes, local parks and public buildings, really any place where people may be taking care of the land and making decisions about how they do that. First, let's talk about water. You've probably learned the basics of the water cycle in your science classes, so you know we're not getting any new water on the planet. The same water is cycled over and over again. That means all living things on Earth are sharing a limited supply of water. Here in Alachua County, most of the water that's used on landscapes comes from the same place we get all the water we need as humans for bathing or drinking or any other use. It's also the same place our local springs and rivers get their water to continue flowing, the aquifer. The aquifer is our local shared water source, so it's important people don't use more water than we need. And one way we can really help to conserve water is by using less on landscapes. The winter time is really a great time to conserve on outdoor water use. When grass starts to turn brown, the first thing we may naturally think is that it needs water. But remember, in the winter, grasses are dormant and they don't need much water. In fact, if grass is overwatered when it's in a dormant state, it can actually be harmful by encouraging bacteria or mold to grow or making the grass more likely to be invaded by pests. Very often, rain alone will give the grass and landscapes enough water to do well. If we have a really dry winter, grasses may need to be watered a little, but in general, they don't need any additions. Imagine how much water can be saved for our springs and rivers if no grass is watered during the dormant season. 
Now let's talk about things that may be added to landscapes that can get washed into local water. Bug spray, also called pesticide, is sometimes used on landscapes. If too much bug spray is used, it can wash off of landscapes when it rains and wash into storm drains that lead to stormwater basins, lakes, or creeks where it may harm or even kill the small animals living in the water we hadn't meant to. Herbicide or weed killer is also sometimes used on landscapes and when used too heavily can also be washed into our water. We don't want to accidentally harm plants living in our creeks or harm wildlife and we want to keep our water healthy. When it comes to protecting local water and wildlife, using the smallest amount of pesticide or herbicide possible or choosing not to use any is best. Fertilizer is another chemical used in landscapes. Fertilizer helps plants to grow, but when too much of it is used, it can wash off of landscapes and get carried into local water. Many of our creeks lead to sinkholes and may carry the nutrients from fertilizer picked up along the way into the aquifer. The nutrients from fertilizer can also leach down through soils and into the aquifer below when they aren't taken up by plants. Nutrients found in fertilizer can be harmful to water quality, wildlife, and ecosystems when there is too much present in the water. Too much nitrogen in the water can encourage algae growth. You may have been hearing about algae causing problems in Florida's water. Algae isn't bad, but too much algae can be harmful. It can smother plants or block sunlight to them, causing them to die off. It can make an area like this, with lots of native plants growing, look more like this. Not only is it less attractive, but this means there will be fewer plants and variety available to wildlife that may depend on it for food or for cover. In the wintertime, grasses aren't actively taking up nutrients, so applying fertilizer to grasses just wouldn't make sense. We don't want nutrients getting washed into the water where they encourage algae to grow, not in our creeks, lakes, or in our springs. To protect the water, fertilizer can only be used in the springtime, and many people taking care of landscapes are choosing not to use fertilizer at all and choosing plants and grasses that don't need these additions. We'll talk about Florida-friendly landscapes in an upcoming episode. Now you know a little more about the connection of landscaping practices and local water. When we make informed choices in caring for the land, keeping water in mind, we can help to protect local creeks, springs, lakes, rivers, wildlife, and the water we drink. Join us for another Water Wisdom episode to learn more about local water and how we can help protect it with simple actions in our daily lives.